for being here. And we are missing a lot of families today. Um, and continue to pray for the Phillips and reach out to them. Um, they've been filling in for someone helping at another church um, that needed help. And um, but, I, but he said he's still coming here, so I, we're going to have to go rope him up and time to get him. So and just Thank you, even give them a call. Let them know you're missing them, brother Mark. Uh, uh, Dixon, reach out to him, amen. And, uh, and of course, Tim and Connie aren't here today. Phillips aren't here today. Uh, of course, Brother Jack is, is really in need of a miracle. That's where Billy is with them. Brother Keith Stroud, been a little while since I've seen him. Reach out to him. I'm bringing these names because they're all important, amen. We want to we wanna reach out to them. El Frank's not here today. Uh, Tim and Morgan. And <coughs> Morgan's birthday, I think, was today, wasn't it? She, she probably skipped in church because it's her birthday. We're going to have to pray her through when she gets back. Amen. So she's not here. So this is what happens when you're not here. Amen. Just slam you. Just talk about you. Oh, amen. We love her. <laughs> yeah, you laughed, brother, but you was gone a lot. We made a lot of fun of you. Amen. I'm glad to have you back, too. Glad to see you. He had moved to Murfreesboro. Been attending a good church out there. Amen. So I'm glad to see him. Amen. If you got your Bibles, would you open them up to the book of 1 Kings? Oh, yeah, Brother Carl Tweedy is some kind of allergic reaction or something, some kind of breakout, and they um, took him to the emergency rooms. So, and Brother Angela Allen <coughs> went to the... Yeah, I keep saying that. Sister, brother, man. Mine. And I knew, found out you don't... You gotta use her legal last name when you find try to find her at the hospital. Amen. Kilpatrick uh, didn't know that and thought didn't know where she was, but um, she uh, went into the ER last night and pretty sick. And um, I guess she'll be released sometime today, right? Or, oh, she's home good. All right. So brother Kenny been struggling with the sickness, but man, he he should preach to our uh, great lesson at two o'clock. But we want all the sickness gone out of here. Amen. Amen. All right. Man, great things are happening. You got that. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 6, 19 through 22. Read from up there so you can see. And the oracle he prepared in the house within to set there the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the oracle in the four part was 20 cubits in length and 20 cubits in breadth and 20 cubits in the height thereof. And he overlaid it. Somebody say overlaid. Overlaid. With pure gold. Somebody say gold. Gold. And so covered the altar. And the shout the altar was covered too. Which was of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the house. So even the house was overlaid. With what? With pure gold. And he made a partition by the chains of gold before the oracle, and he overlaid it with gold. So it was all overlaid with gold. And the whole house, so much out, the whole house, he overlaid with gold until he had finished all the house. Also the whole altar, my shot, the altar was covered. Amen, that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. Man, how many of y'all would like to have all that gold? Amen, that's a lot of gold. Dear Lord, we thank you for your, for your wonderful presence here today, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would help me today, Lord, to preach your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask that you use me today, Jesus. Knowing me from the top of my head, my soul's up my feet, use me to speak to your people, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 As you're being seated, shout mercy to somebody. Mercy. Brother Jared likes stories and folk tales and stuff, so this one's for you. Long ago in a small, faraway galaxy, no, village, village, there was a place known as the House of a Thousand Mirrors. A small, happy dog learned of this place and decided to visit. When the dog arrived, he bounced happily up the stairs to the doorway. He looked through the door with his ears lifted high and his tail wagging as fast as it could. To his great surprise, he found himself <clears throat> staring at 1,000 other happy little dogs with their tails wagging just as fast as his. He smiled a great smile, and 1,000 dogs smiled in return. As he left the house, he thought to himself, 
This is a wonderful place. I will come back and visit it often. In the same village, there was another little dog that wasn't quite so happy as the first one. He decided to visit the house. He slowly climbed the stairs and with his head hung low, he looked into the door. He saw a thousand unfriendly dogs staring back at him. He growled and the pack of dogs growled in return. As he left, he thought to himself, this is a horrible place and I will never go back there again. Of course, it wasn't a house filled with 1,000 dogs, either happy or sad. It was simply a house filled with 1,000 mirrors. The law of mirrors is simply this. Mirrors only reflect what is set before them. Amen. The law of mirrors is simply this. Mirrors only reflect what is set before them. Won't you look to the person beside you and say, maybe it's your fault. <laughs> I'll stay off of that. Amen. That's another message for another time. I can think of another house of many mirrors we just read about. Solomon built such a house for God. It was a house within a house. And within the innermost house, everything was overlaid with shining, sparkling gold. Gold floors, gold walls, gold ceilings, everything covered with pure, shimmering gold. If we get Trump for president, that might be what the White House looks like before he's done. I'm, I'm going to stay off of the political stuff today. Solomon had built a house of mirrors. To set there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the Oracle in the forepart was 20 cubits in length and 20 cubits in breadth and 20 cubits in height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold and so covered the altar which was of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the house within pure gold and he made a partition by the chains of gold before the Oracle and he overlaid it with gold. And the whole house was overlaid with gold until he had finished all the house. Also the whole altar... That was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. The primary piece of furniture within the oracle was the Ark of the Covenant. Angelic wings of beaten gold reached across a blood splattered, spattered mercy seat. The primary piece of furniture. Mirrors only reflect what is before them. What did these walls, ceilings, and floors of gold reflect? They all reflected the mercy seat where God showed his mercy. Everywhere one looked in that house, he saw mercy. He saw mercy to the east. He saw mercy to the north. Mercy to the south. Mercy everywhere he looked. Mercy to the highest. Mercy to the lowest. Hear the words of Jude. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the house of multiplied mercies. God is merciful. The adjective used more often of God than any scripture is holy. God is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the threefold uh, chant of the seraphim that fly about the throne of God. God has a character. And his character is holy. God reflects that character upon us. He says, be holy for I am holy. We worship God in the beauty of what? Of his holiness. We lift up holy hands. We lift up holy hearts. We lift up holy hosannas. Holy worship for a holy God. God reflects his holiness upon how we serve him. Another adjective used quite often to describe God deals with his mercy. God is merciful. The Apostle Paul called God the father of mercies. The psalmist and the Apostle John combined to picture his presence as one that flows with mercy. Allow me to paraphrase and piece together this song that I found. Well, if I can find, can't even find the song anymore. I'm not going to use that anymore. Let's look at Psalm 23, verse 6. That's the left part of it at home. Was in God's will. Amen. Psalm 23 and 6 says, 6 says, It is I 
who caused goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. Somebody shout, all the days of my life. Psalm 25 and 10. And we're just going to kind of piece, piece a picture here together of God's mercy. And all my ways towards you shall be mercy and truth. Isaiah 46 and 4 says, To your old age, I am he who will see you through. I have made you. I will bear you. I will carry you. I will deliver you. I will make an everlasting covenant with you that I will not turn away from you to do you good. I swear unto you that I will show you my kindness, the kindness of God. I will not forget to show you my mercies. I can as soon forget to be God as forget to be gracious. While my name is Jehovah, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, I will never forget to show mercy to you. The earth shall quake and the hills shall be rent asunder, but my mercies shall not depart from you, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed. Is there any doubt God is merciful? Forty-one times in the Old Testament, we are told to praise God for the simple reason of His enduring mercy. Twenty-six times in Psalm 136, the psalmist urges us to praise God for His abiding mercy, for His mercy endureth forever. Twenty-six times we are reminded to praise God for His goodness. Twenty-six times we are reminded that God is merciful because He is good. Twenty-six times Times we are reminded that God is a giver. 26 times we are reminded that any goodness God shows is his mercy, not any merit on man's part. 26 times, one for each letter in the English alphabet, we are reminded that God is good from beginning to end, from A to Z, from Alpha to Omega. Would someone like to worship the merciful God? Let us praise him for his mercy does endure forever. God seems singularly discontent with leaving mercy in the singular. He likes to get mercy into the plural. It's not just mercy, it's mercies. He is the father of what? Mercies. And he is rich in mercy. He is an infinite God with infinite goodness and he chooses to multiply his mercy. God's mercies are called many, and he multiplies them to those in need. His mercies are called great, and he magnifies them to cover the need. His mercies are called sure, and he expands these to secure those in need. His mercies are called tender, and with tender mercies, he strengthens those who are weak. His mercies are called unfailing. The fig tree, the vine, and the flock may fail us, but the Lord's mercies are unfailing. God has many great, sure, tender, and unfailing mercies at his disposal. God is so rich in mercy. I've often heard of the great contrast between law and mercy. Yet I'm reminded that beneath the mercy seat is the Ark of the Covenant rested the law. It appears to me that we can't even know mercy until we've known the law. Until we know God's exacting sense of justice and His unswerving holiness, then we are unable to grasp the depths and the heights of His mercy. Before we can fathom the great price paid for our sins, then we must, through the law, know how great a sinner we really are. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a price he paid. When I look into the heart of the law, the Ten Commandments, I still see mercy. Just after the first two commandments, to put God first and to put nothing second, you find the whole you find that God who shows mercy unto thousands. Later in the second giving of the law, God introduced himself to Moses as the one who is merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands. 
Mercy for thousands of people. Mercy for thousands of generations. Mercy for thousands of needs. Mercy for thousands of transgressions. Mercy multiplied mercies. God is merciful. Somebody shout yes. God multiplies his mercy. We see that. Somebody else shout yes. But as a river cries for a sea and sunlight cries for soil, mercy needs an object. Multiplied mercies must have an object. And that object is supposed to be you. God wants to multiply his mercies to you. We used to pray, I remember before we'd go on a trip, we would pray for traveling mercies. We used to pray for sustaining mercies during hard times. We used to pray for harvest mercies and for maritime mercies. They, they, people used to know, and I hope we still do today, that God wants to share mercy with you. In times of great need, nothing speaks to a man's heart like the Psalms. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenty redemption and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities for great sin there is plenteous redemption for multiplied misery there is multiplied mercy in God's house the mercies of God fuel our worship to him each sin God forgives should cause a fresh fountain of awe to spring from our hearts for there is forgiveness with thee and thou mayest be feared from such great mercies we offer ourselves unto God a living sacrifice Man, thank you for I found mercy. this old hymn thank you for mercy called now from the altar of my heart now from the altar of my heart let incense flames arise arise assist me lord to over to offer up my evening sacrifice minutes and mercies multiplied have made up all this day minutes come quick but mercies were more fleet and free than they new time new favor and new joys do a new song require till i shall praise thee as i would accept my heart's desire Multiplied minutes and mercies make up each day. The minutes come quick, but mercies are quicker. Yes, I'll praise Him. I'll praise Him for His mercies. Thank you for mercy. Thank you. In the book of Lamentations, it says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It was permitted only once a year in Solomon's temple. A special someone could step within the veil and see the mercy seat. From the medium of gold mirrors covering the walls, ceilings, and floors, they saw that mercy multiply. The blood of the Lamb reflected everywhere. Today, in this house, we have come to magnify and multiply His mercy. Look not upon us, we are only mirrors of His mercy. Perhaps you could catch a glimpse of His mercy. Perhaps His mercy could touch you. This is a place of a thousand needs covered by a thousand mercies. This is a place where God's goodness can reflect off of you. As surely as the stars cross the heavens, there's mercy passing over you and I. When I look in this house, I see mercy on every face. I see mercy to finish the race. I see mercy to start over. I see mercy to give fresh hope. I see mercy in the blood of the Lamb. Jude would say, let mercy be multiplied to you. Oh, I shall mercy. I don't know about you, but I appreciate 
mercy. I'm so thankful for mercy. I'm so thankful that God continues to work on me. Continues to work with me. I posted the other day on Facebook that I thank God for the extended warranty that he's put on my life because I've needed it. Oh, if God didn't have a warranty on my life, I'd done been given up on and I would be broken never to be put back together again. But I know I must have some type of warranty because every time I fall apart, there is a just and faithful God that shines his mercy down upon me, picks up the broken pieces and puts me back together again. I know that God's not through with me because he continues to put back the broken pieces. I know that God is not through with me because mercy keeps knocking on my door. If mercy is following you, and he said what mercy and goodness shall all, not just part, but all of the days of your life. This isn't a limited warranty, but with God, we've got a warranty that is guaranteed for life. I thank God for a lifetime protection plan. I thank God, amen, that along with the Holy Ghost came mercy and goodness. When God gave me this new life, it was like getting a new car from a dealership and they tell you, as long as this car is in your name, you're going to get free fuel for the rest of your life that you own this vehicle. And not only that, but we're going to offer an extended warranty on the engine. We're going to offer an extended warranty on the transmission. No matter what goes wrong, as long as it's in your name, we're going to take care of you. Boy, that makes you want to go buy a new car right there. Amen. It would be make more sense economically to just go buy a car like that than to continue on with one that when it breaks down, it costs you a fortune. Amen. To reinvest in it and fix it. And sometimes it's just not worth it. We've got to know when it's time to move on and move into God's promises. And some of you have been carrying around an old coat that God did not intend for you to keep. Driving around an old car that God did not intend for you to continue driving. I'm talking spiritually here. God wants you to put on a new coat. There is an anointing that God has for you. But before you can put on a new coat, you got to throw away the old one before he can give you keys to new transportation. You've got to get rid of the old one. God's wanting to give you something better. But you're saying I'm used to the familiar. I know how to work on this car. I know how to deal with this car. But every time you deal with it, it costs you money. It costs you time. It causes suffering. It causes stress. I don't know how to work on the new one. But that's the good thing. Amen. God said there's a warranty that comes with it. And when you break down, I've got a master mechanic that'll fix it up. Do you get what I'm trying to tell you? You don't have to know how to work this new thing. You don't have to know what you're doing. Just know that God is going to take care of it. If you'll throw off the old one so you can receive the new one. God said, I don't want you to trust in your own skill. I don't want you to trust in yourself. I want you to trust in me. I want you to give me the glory. I'll tell you, God remembers what we are willing to forget. And God will forget what we remember. We want to we want to remember when God did something great. We want to remember when something great happened in our life. And often God will do something awesome and deliver and make a way. And before long, we're cutting God out of the credits. And we're saying, well, this is what I overcame and this is what I went through and this is what I did. And I've heard people say, man, my testimony is I overcame, man. I, I went through this for 15 years and I came out on the other side and that's awesome. But where was God? Because if it wasn't for him, you would have never came out on the other side. Don't forget that God brought you out. Don't forget. Because Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage. But we often forget that Joshua, 
We all think about Moses. We we so glad that God delivered us. I'm so glad that He brought me out. We talked about the old sin that we came out of. We're so glad that God brought me out. The problem is, is you've been brought out, but you've never been taken in. You've been brought out of captivity. You've been brought out of bondage. God has forgiven you of sins. But when are you going to get in the new car? When are you going to put the new coat on? When are you going to start walking in authority? When are you going to start walking in power? I'm so glad God forgave me. But there's a promised land over there. Moses, I'm glad you let me out. But thank God for Joshua's that cleaned his hand. I'm trying to be a Joshua to this church, to this generation. I'm so glad you've been brought out. But church, it's time to get more into God than we've ever been before. Don't forget that it was God that did it. And it was God that set me free. You know what? I need to remember. I need to remember. And I, I know we preach against this often. We say you need to forget about your mistakes. Forget about your mess ups. I say you need to remember your mistakes. Remember your mess ups. Remember all these things that God led you free from and set you free. Because God... Come on. Yeah. He's willing to forget what we will remember. Thank you, Jesus. God, I remember you brought me out. Yes, you did, I remember yes, you what you did. did. Lord. Hallelujah. God's yes, willing to have mercy. Forgive and forget what you did. Lord God. I'm not saying you stay reminiscing in the sin and thinking about what you didn't think. I'm, I'm talking about remember the mercy that was poured out upon you. The problem with people today is we forget that we needed mercy. And so we start talking about somebody else that needs it. We start talking about what somebody else did and what they're going through. And God's saying you need to remember the mercy that was poured upon you. As a matter of fact, he tells us that if we want mercy, we need to start showing mercy. I'm talking about personal revival again. If you want a real revival inside of you, then you've got to start showing mercy. You've got to start remembering what God brought you from and what God brought you through. And know that God didn't bring you out to leave you in a wilderness. That God brought you out to take you in. That mercy is there. My goodness, if it wasn't for mercy, the children of Israel would have never seen the promised land. My goodness, how despicable they were so often. Every time that things didn't go perfectly their way, they'd begin to complain. God would pour out manna from heaven and it just wasn't enough. They were always thirsty. They were always hungry. Their needs would be taken care of. They'd be delivered. Then Moses goes away for just a little while and here they are worshiping a false god. And then they were always getting into trouble. But thank God for the mercy. The mercy. I know we all see the law coming down. We see Moses being angry. But don't forget, they were all destroyed because God's mercy. Because God's mercy. They were able to go into the promised land because of mercy. Not a one of us would be able to stand up today. Not a one of us would be worthy to come into this church and not been for the love and mercy of God. Can we stand up? Yes, Musicians. No one did more teaching here. We need to get a hold of this. God's mercy is not just a get out of jail free card. Come on. Come on. God's mercy is not a permit to sin. God's mercy is insurance. God's mercy is a warranty. God's mercy is if you do mess up, if you do fall down, I'm going to be there to pick you up. Come on. We ought to be seeking to, to obey His law and love His law. At the same time, know that mercy is the only way that we can stay in this. Amen. That mercy is the only way we can keep on keeping on. And when we come into this house, we ought to see mercy. Not see each other's faults and see other's sins. But see it as though God does. See mercy reflected everywhere. To see that blood that was spattered upon the altar. To see it on the ceiling. To see it on the floors. God, help me to see mercy multiplied. God, help me to see it.
when I look at my brother, when I look at my sister, God, help me to see through eyes of mercy and through eyes of love. Thank God for second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Thank God that He's a God that can walk through the junkyard of our lives. See all the rest. See all the busted, broken parts. But yet see something redeemable. Brother Henderson, how many cars have you restored probably over your lifetime? Several. A lot of cars. That looked hopeless to somebody like me. And Sister Jean. And she probably thought many a time, what do you see in this car? Why did you pick that up? I'm sure as he's brought a car home on a trailer. Sister Jean shaking her head. But he saw what it could be. And I'm sure you were surprised before. Thank you, Chief. I'm sure there were times she was thinking, he'll never get this one fixed. He'll never get it going. He's got other things he needs to do, other things to do. But yet he kept seeing Thank you, Chief. that finished product. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And he made something that would not shine. Because the paint was gone, there's rust. I'm sure he tried to find ones that weren't rusty, but as you get back in the day, couldn't shine it. But all of a sudden you can go out there and just shine it up. Where wax, nothing else would do. It needed a complete makeover. Mercy. It's the same. He had mercy on something Sister Jean didn't have no mercy on. Because he saw what it could be. And I'm just so glad that our God is the one that's looking at us. I'm so glad Sister Jean's not God looking through the junkyard of our lives. <laughs> We have a brother Carl <laughs> that looks at it and says, you know, that can be something. It was great in its day. It can be even greater. Thank God. And have you ever just overhauled it and made it a little bit faster than it would have been in its day? It's still getting these cars and they'll say, man, well, we're going to soup it up and it's going to be... It's going to be even more powerful than it was in its day. And that's, that's another great thing about God's mercy. Is that God doesn't just restore us, but God takes us beyond. Come on. He takes us beyond what we could ever imagine we could be or become. God sees you and He doesn't just see you for what, for what you have been or what you have in you. But God says, I'm going to place something even bigger under their hood. This time around, I'm going to come on. This time around, the mountain is going to be different. This time is going to be different. Come on, God gave you strength to get up. But God said, I'm not going to stop at this one. You get up from this one. When the key is turned again on you, I know it's been years since they've been able to, but this time when the key is turned over, the engine's going to roar a little louder than it's ever roared before. There's going to be a little bit more power than there was before. Come on, this is mercy. Yeah. This is mercy regenerated. Yeah. This is mercy yeah. magnified. This is mercy to a whole new level. God says this mercy is going to take them through to something greater. Somebody get a hold of the hand of mercy right now. Say, God, I know that when I come through this, I'm going to come out stronger. I'm going to come out pure. I'm going to come out more on fire. Satan, amen. You're not going to be able to hold me down. You're not going to be able to keep me down because God's got a plan for me. God sees something in me. Stand up. Stand up. I don't care how many times you fail. How many times you've turned away. God said, I can still do something great. I can still do something awesome. I can still do something powerful in them. I wonder if some of us could step out from where we are and come around these altars for a moment. I don't want to just dismiss and go home. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let's lift our hands towards heaven.